Uh, thanks, Lonnie. I appreciate that. And I'll try to move the mic here so I'm looking everywhere. Um, I really appreciate that introduction. It's, it's kind of dangerous when you get introduced as a compelling speaker because now I feel the pressure is on. Uh, it's like introducing somebody and saying, oh, Neil's really, really funny, but my topic is serious and, and it's a danger there. Uh, I want to give you a little background. Uh, you know, you mentioned successful and failed businesses, but a, a part of my um, background that's important and relevant to today was that I've been doing government contracting one way or another since early 90s. First, first Iraq war, I was in the Army. So I did that for a while. When I came out, I started doing government contracting pretty much straight off. And since 1998, I've had my own companies um, doing various uh, services in the government. And in those, um, I've always kind of stayed focused on sales and service and never on the process. Last year, I sold my last company that I've had for 10 years. It was a really successful company in the IC world, civilian sector, and the uh, DOD. I always forget that small group. And um, it's been very focused. I've been very focused on the federal government uh, and how to sell into the government and how to do services in there. When I sold my company, I said I wanted to start a new one. And I'm out of DC, if, if I hadn't said that. Um, I'm out of DC, and I was getting ready to start a new company. Uh, I wanted to try a whole new spin on uh, pro providing innovation to the government. How can I do something a little different rather than just uh, time and material, which I had been doing? And right when I was starting my company, my wife was telling me about my niece was having challenges out in Oklahoma. She has four kids and um, she's go she went to school. She works really hard, two jobs, but she feels like she has no future in Oklahoma. She wants to live in Oklahoma. She's in Duncan, Oklahoma. And I didn't really care where I started the company. And I said, okay, well, let's go to Oklahoma and just start the company there. Um, I'm in IT, so I can start it anywhere. Uh, for those of you who do that kind of work, you know that. It's different than construction, right? And um, so when I got there to Duncan, Oklahoma, I started around Tabby and um, we got the company going and instantly I began to understand the uh, HubZone program as an opportunity for uh, my company. I became a HubZone company in December, I uh, got certified as a HubZone company and in that process I realized the challenge. The HubZone uh, program is an awesome program but it's never hit its goals. 8A does phenomenal, it's like almost 10%, right? Uh, I looked at that and said we have to mimic that. The women's program kept taking off, hit 5%, dipped a little bit, SDVO, same thing. But the HubZone program wasn't doing that. So I said, uh, what can we do? I looked around, there was really no one focused on it. I started the HubZone Chamber of Commerce and the purpose was uh, really one goal, the, to get the $6 billion off the table. $13 billion is what I like to say goes to HubZone companies. Um, the government has done their job. They said, here's $13 billion. It's for HubZone companies. Use it up, if you don't use it up, we'll push it somewhere else. Um, we don't use it up. And so the second part of that is I said, how are we gonna do this? And the only way to do it is to follow Michael Jackson's advice, start with the man in the mirror. Um, and I looked right in the mirror and I said, how can we do something about it? We uh, contractors, it's not the government. Congress passed their laws and gave us money. Uh, the federal government has all set goals and they wanna achieve it. The small business specialists are there trying to help us. The contracting officers put out RFPs, um, not RFPs, RFIs and sources sought. And really, you know, if you look in the mirror, hub zone companies are not responding. So the HubZone Chamber was formed to build that collaboration, to make ourselves accountable. And in six months, we've grown to over 800 active members. And none of us is pointing the finger somewhere else. We're all pointing it right back at ourselves. We have daily set-aside calls that look at an RFP, an RFI, excuse me, and try to figure out how to push it. And if I use two quick examples, recently uh, the SBA, Marianne Pardo, um, forwarded a State Department uh, opportunity. They were trying to get hub zones who were interested, but they weren't responding. The R RFI had closed, and uh, they took one last chance to reach out to the SBA. Fortunately for me, the SBA was tracking us, and so she sent it to me in an email and said, can you get something back in the next day? It's 10-page response. And I said, of course not. <laughs> and, but I said it much nicer. I said, wow, I mean, this is exactly what we're looking for, but one day, that's just tough for you know, for all of you, you, can't, you really can't respond that fast um, for the majority of us. I wish you'd keep us in mind the next time. And we happened to copy the contracting officer into that thread. Uh, I might have slid them in there. And they, re <laughs> they responded within 30 minutes. Hey, Neil, sorry you know, for the delay. We know this is short notice. How about they just express interest and provide this basic core part of information? I'm like, it's good. Well, let's do it. And so I reached out to the HubZone Chamber membership, the active membership, as well as the inactive membership, because we do not, uh, if I side note for a second, we don't charge dues. I don't believe in dues because then I focus on just you who are paying me. And so we, it's free. And so everybody gets their 
um, fair share in it. So we reached out to all the HUBZone companies who could do this work. In 24 hours, we got the State Department almost 100 responses from small businesses. Tell me they're not really seriously considering setting this aside to HUBZone. I don't know if I said this, it's a $200 million IDIQ. $200 million IDIQ could have just slid off the table. I'm at home complaining that that $6 billion is not coming to me, yet I didn't respond to the RFI. But now I'm responding to it. Uh, two weeks later, NASA let us do the same thing with a 50 to $100 million IDIQ. These opportunities are there, and that's why I say look in the mirror. Now, we just don't say look in the mirror. We try to help you and, and move on in that direction. But um, speaking of looking in the mirror, and, and it's funny, no one has given me a time, and that's the bad thing to do to an Irishman. <laughs> um, but, but I will try to keep it focused and slide it right out. But when I was walking around here, I noticed everybody looked sharp. Right? I was looking and seeing that people look sharp, they were put together you know, you, um, from your shoes, maybe I got a little fancy converse that helps me walk around, um, but how we're dressed, how we look, we look sharp. And it's because um, you were coming here to impress the Department of Energy's personnel and the fellow attendees. We wanted to look good, make a good first impression. And we're doing a good job on that. Unfortunately, in DSBS, the Dynamic Small Business Search, we look like we're wearing Crocs, sweats, and we still have pillow lines on there. Um, I have 10 hours left? Ten minutes, t t 10 minutes left? Um, then that's perfect. Uh, anyways, in DSBS, if you don't really know what it is, because I made the assumption everybody knows what it is, but I don't think everybody does. When you start a company, the owner or somebody like that goes into SAM, registers at SAM, and then almost always forgets about it. I did that hurdle that I have to do to start a business, and then I moved on. But we miss out on the fact, and me personally, I missed out on it for the last 10 years. I didn't even really pay attention to it. It's the number one marketing tool that we have. More important than a business card, more important than a capability uh, statement, more important than your website. It's the passive marketing that sits out there. It's the first place um, all of these pro procurement professionals, and we're talking about hundreds of thousands of procurement professionals, look, when they want to find a small business, they go in to DSBS, the Dynamic Small Business Search, and they type in two things generally. You know, Clearly, I'm making my opinion on how this goes, right? They type in a keyword, just like you would on Google, and they type in a NAICS code. And when you look at 300,000 of us who sit in a, uh, the top of a funnel, right, that's how many small businesses are active to do business right now with the government. 300,000, when they type in a keyword in a NAICS code, it short, shortens that amount of us who are there. So we're being shortlisted. I did the same thing when I walked around, and some of you might do the same thing. I, I look over there and I say, ah, oh, that person's, gr and I didn't mean to point to anybody, uh, but you know, that person's grumpy, I'm going over here. And maybe it just like had a burp or something, right? But it doesn't matter, I moved over and you've been shortlisted. And in the government, it's the same way. The difference in DSBS is they're looking at it every day. And so once they do a NAICS and a keyword, they move on and they, they begin to shortlist you on a capability narrative. They look at your past performance down at the bottom of it. It's the first place before you ever respond to the government. If you have a good capability narrative, that's your compelling story. If you have um, past performance is listed there that says you have experience. Now that contracting officer or small business specialist is saying, this is awesome. I, uh, I have a person who's on my short list. And as soon as they find 20 or 50, that's a respectable amount to call it good market research and they move on. So 300,000 down to 20 to 50, you want to be, I want to be in that 20 to 50. So I'll try to wrap up with this part as I plan somewhere around my time, is that um, one of the things that we did for you, the HUBZone Chamber of Commerce did for you today, is we took all the attendees that we could um, find the information, so about 110 of you, and we created this thing, and I know you all can see it really well, but we created one of these quick analysis reports for each one of you that looks at your DS profile and gives you a grade, A through F. And, and, and I give almost 50% Fs. And the thing about an F is it's failure, right? But it's fantastic. It tells you exactly where you're missing out on something that is a one hour task. If you go into DSBS and do these basic little things on your drive home, on the flight home, whatever it is, you will all of a sudden start being found. You will work really, really hard over here, but miss out on this. And so um, we did one of these for each one of you. If you have questions for me, you can ask. Um, the, we're going to hold off and try to give these to you at uh, like right before lunch. So you can come and talk to me, but I'm not going to hand them out until right before lunch. Um, and I will tell you, because 112 is a lot. I, I want to thank Sue, who's on my team right there. Um, holding up her iPhone for some random reason. And, uh, you know, and the rest of my team, because a lot of us worked on it, six of us worked on this, putting this together for free, volunteer. Um, I'm not looking for credit, but I would like you to take it serious 
if you pick it up and actually do something because it'll help you, it'll help you get more money, um, frankly. I mean, that's the whole point of a small business. And it'll help the government actually have more qualified people to pull from in their pool. So um, if you're a HubZone company, well, I got five more minutes and I was ready to walk off, but I, no, I, I will walk off anyways just to free up time in a minute. But if you're a HubZone company, I would like to uh, encourage you to the, join the HubZone Chamber of Commerce. And for anybody who's interested, go to HubZoneChamber.com. HubZoneChamber.com. And on that, you'll find um, a lot of information about the HubZone Chamber, as well as how to join us. Joining us basically is to connect to LinkedIn. Uh, that's the entire process. So I'm going to introduce the uh, next speaker, who uh, is pretty exciting, right? Am I still doing that? I get to do that, or? Do we have time for questions? Oh. No? Oh, so. Yes. We have. Do some questions? Yes. Yeah. Two, two, three minutes. Yeah. Do we? Uh, anybody have questions? There appear they just talked among themselves and said, if anybody has questions. Does anybody have a question you want to ask me privately that you're willing to ask me now? <laughs> yes, in the back, number seven. Yes, membership in the HubZone Chamber of Commerce is free. Um, our goal is to keep the cost to zero forever. Uh, we want to raise the tide. And, and one of the cool things about being in charge, you can set the rules. And so I, I have belonged to memberships where I feel like uh, the organization wants to make sure you're getting an ROI for your payment, your membership dues, and then you begin not to see stuff. We have members from Guam to U.S. Virgin Island. I mean, we have a lot of members from Guam in every state in between. And that's exciting because it was really fast for them to do it. So, uh, yes, please join. And I'm sorry, just to be clear, we call it dues free, but we do require you to do things, like show up and do things. It's the same thing the government does. So you'll have to listen to us hassle you to, you know, write an RFI response of quality or something. Yes? Joanna Sandoval with SBA. Um, how many active Colorado members do you have? Hmm. No? <laughs> uh, so yes, I know that, and I'll have to research my thing to get it to you. I don't know it off the top of my head. Yeah, so the membership is done through, so the question was how many members do we have from Colorado? And the um, broader question was can uh, members interact with each other? Uh, absolutely, we actually try to teach them to go into DSBS to find their buddies and connect that way. But we're, membership is done through LinkedIn, a LinkedIn group. So as soon as you're in there, you're able to see all the members, you're able to message them, connect with them. We really wanna um, uh, improve communication collaboration uh, for all of the folks in there. Um, I think Colorado has about 80, how many? Okay, so there's about 80 HubZone uh, companies, I think, in how many? 94? 94. So there's 94 um, HubZone certified companies in Colorado, and there's 10 of them in, um, in the HubZone chamber until the end of the day, which I expect to be 30 or, <laughs> right. If you can't afford it, come to me and I'll pay for you. Um, yes. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait, uh, let me pause for a second. Can you restate the question? Is the, is the challenge with the chamber or with the hub zone? I am a member of the hub yeah. zone chamber. And thank you. And sometimes it's challenging due to the zone. Oh, the time zones. Yes. Because you're in? Alaska. Okay, so we're trying, okay, so the question is, uh, what can you do for me when I'm in Guam or Alaska and not Washington, D.C.? Uh, that's another classic problem, right? So we're pushing our activities uh, later and later in the night. Uh, so when I say later and later in the night, I got four-year-old twin boys, so I go home. Um, but we're trying to push them into 3.30, 4.30, uh, even 5 o'clock events uh, specifically for that. We're also going to mimic SBA's um, footprint of regional directors, I think. There's like 10 of them. We created 12, one for the Atlantic and one for the Pacific, specifically to begin to address um, opportunities up your way that aren't aren't uh, native to the Pacific Ocean, but are bringing countrywide opportunities there that are just convenient to you. It's very important to me that Guam has a shot, that the Mariana Islands, uh, the Northern Mariana Islands, have a shot. Because I'm in Washington, D.C., I can walk to anybody. 
and get into a meeting. But it's not hard at all. I just knock on it. Uh, Charlie, uh, Mr. Smith is not here today, but he's in DC. I, like I can walk down. How many of you can easily do that without cost? And I feel bad for the Pacific, or for the West and for the Pacific Ocean uh, companies. And so the chamber is dedicated to trying to normalize that communication path. So definitely, definitely reach out, remind me you said that, and say, and that I told you I would do it. So hold me accountable right to it. Yes, sir. No, that's perfect. So the question is, how long does it take to join the Hubzone Chamber? Um, one minute is all I got to answer that question. Um, it, it really is a pretty fast process, but here's the thing, I'm the bottleneck. So the Hubzone Chamber membership is approved by me, and really I just look in to make sure it's, it's somebody who, who as some way relevant. You don't even have to be a hub zone anymore. We've expanded um, the PTAX. We just reached out to talk to almost 100 personnel from PTAX, and so we're encouraging them to join. Um, but I don't travel with a computer anymore. Like, I've learned to just relax. And uh, so your application sitting back in DC. As soon as I get there, I'll hit approve, and we'll be good to go. I might get on Sue's computer just because you said that and do it. And yeah, so. OK, so my time is up. If you have questions, please come talk to me. Um, right around lunchtime or something, you can get this. Um, and then, Mr. Ross, I was going to introduce you still, right? Um, and, and this is, again, the problem with putting me in here. <laughs> the, um, so uh, the person who's going to make this event great for us today is uh, Paul Ross. And uh, Mr. Ross is a lead acquisition specialist um, with the Ozdabu team. You've heard about that, and we're big fans of the Ozdabus. Um, and uh, I find it interesting with my small kids. I'd be curious at probably a different range. but. Uh, Mr. Ross, one of the things that people do is they talk about bios, and I like to talk about the dedication that he has to all of us. Um, he is dedicated to the success of the small businesses. Um, every day when he leaves and says goodbye to the wife and the three kids, um, you know, he's coming out here to support us, and I find that uh, just really uh, generous of you. You could have chose a career anywhere, all of you who are in the small business side, and on behalf of everybody here, I thank you for doing that, and I, and I want you all to help me welcome Mr. Ross up here to make this event just awesome through the rest of the day.